Practicing the presence of God. Pastor Michael Hayes back with you. It is a beautiful Wednesday morning, even though it's overcast and a little uh, dusty <laughs> outside, I would say, uh, here in uh, downtown Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I am the pastor of the Oak Grove Seventh-day Adventist Church, by the way, in downtown Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Glad to have you back with us. I know that the Lord has blessed you because you're here with us, you're watching, and uh, thank you for so much, thank you so much for being a part of the uh, PTPOG ministry family. Good morning, Smitta, how are you? Good morning, good morning. Listen, we're going to get right uh, into our word for today. It looks like a few people are having trouble getting, getting up this morning, <laughs> so we'll let them catch up in just a little bit, but we're going to get right into our word today, which is found in the book of Proverbs, chapter 27. Proverbs, chapter 27, and we are looking at verse number eight today. Just one verse. Verse number eight. Good morning, Alberta. How are you? Proverbs, chapter 27, and verse eight says, As a bird that wandereth from her nest, so is a man that wandereth from his place. As a bird that wandereth after, or from her nest, I should say, so is a man that wandereth, wandereth from his place. Today we're speaking from the subject, a place of purpose, a place of purpose. Let's bow our heads, Father. Lord in heaven, we thank you for your blessings, and uh, we know, Lord, that you uh, always have a, a wonderful uh, plan for us, a wonderful message for us, uh, a gift of wisdom, a pearl, if you would, of wisdom and treasure that you want to impart to us this morning. So, Lord, please do that for us. We need you, and we thank you for your grace, and please, God, give us this day our daily bread in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So yesterday we talked a little bit about, and the reason why I'm talking about what we talked about yesterday is because it refers to or it, it uh, impacts today. Yesterday we talked a little bit from the subject or the understanding of kind of being satisfied, right, with where you are or being satisfied with uh, you know, what it is that God has given to you, uh, being able to accept <clears throat> your, your, your status, your place in any point of life. And we looked at that in verse, verses uh, six and seven, faithful, uh, I'm sorry, verse seven, the full soul loatheth uh, and honeycomb, but to the hungry soul, every bitter thing is sweet. And we talked a little bit about how uh, sometimes we, we overreach. Sometimes we don't even pay attention to the things that we have. And we're so busy trying to reach out and grab more uh, that we can't even enjoy the things that we have. And learning to kind of be satisfied with what God has provided for us and being grateful for his providence is a very, very important part of the walk of life with God. Well, today we're, we're kind of launching out from that. Uh, that text is kind of the background, in, in a sense, to, the, to our text this morning. As a bird that wandereth from her nest, so is a man that wanders from his place. 
that word place can mean home. It can mean a, pl uh, a place where you are, uh, you know, kind of, for lack of a better phrase, the place where you're supposed to be. <laughs> when you wander from the place where you are supposed to be, uh, it could be a place of responsibility. It could be a home. It really, what it really talks about is having uh, the Middle Eastern love that that uh, uh, the people in the Middle East have in the in these times for their homeland, and how they did not like or it was not a blessing to them to have to wander from their land to go to another land. How blessed they felt to be a part of the land where they grew up, where their mother grew up, where their father, their grandfather, where all of their children grew up and being a part and parcel of, of that place, okay? Uh, as a bird who wanders from the nest, so is a man who wanders away from his place. Now it doesn't say, it doesn't say why or how the bird wandered from the nest. In the same way, it doesn't say how a man or woman or a human being, a person of responsibility wanders away from their home or wanders away from their place, doesn't say. All, all the text is saying is that if a person wanders away, it, it's, it's a problem, it's an issue. Uh, the implication is one of if a bird wanders from her, her nest or wanders away from the nest, th they lose their place of safety. They lose their place of purpose. They lose, you know, as if a mother, for example, a mother has laid her eggs and then some, she wanders away from the nest. That is not something that really should be done right now. She needs to be there with the nest. She needs to be there with the eggs until they hatch and so forth. This is her, her place. And please don't, don't take any extra implications on that. I'm just making an analogy, okay? Not talking about women ought to stay at home. That, that's not the point. Please don't go there, okay? The point is this. Here's the point. The point is that God has a place for you and I. God has a place for you and I, and for us to seek to wander, or for us to be in any way pushed away or forced to wander from that place causes problems, causes issues. It's important for us to be in the place where God would have us to be. It's important to be where God called us to be, to be where God would have us to be. Now, leaving our home, leaving our home or leaving the place of purpose was actually initially a punishment. If you look here at Genesis chapter four, verses 12 and 13, this is the story of Cain. And we know the story of Cain who murdered his brother in cold blood over a religious question, right? over a religious question. The first murder was over a religious question. Do you know that? The first murder was over <laughs> theology mm. between two brothers. Isn't that something? I got a whole sermon on that, but I'm not going to do that today, <laughs> okay? But suffice it to say, when God came and asked, listen, where is your brother? Abel, where is he? Can't find him, as if God didn't know. And of course, Cain responds with the often quoted, am I my brother's keeper? Am I supposed to be the one who keeps him? In other words, the implication that Cain gives is, shouldn't you be the one who keeps him? Not me. You're the one who made him. <laughs> shouldn't you be following after him? Isn't that something? Oh, the pride, the, the, the nature of pride is just so disgusting. But anyway, so God says, because you've done this, because you have done this, he says, I'm going to punish you. 
I'm going to punish you. And the punishment was he was banished from his home. He could no longer come. He was banished. Watch this. Genesis chapter 4, verses 12 and 13 says this. When you till the ground, it's not going from now and henceforth yield unto you her strength. You're going to be a fugitive and a vagabond in the earth. And Cain said to the Lord, watch this, my punishment is greater than I can bear. Now think about that. He saw, watch this, this is deep, this is deep. He saw as being banished from his home, from his place of purpose as too much of a punishment for him to bear. Isn't that something? That's how tied to their place of purpose, how tied to the land, how tied to their home people were in ancient times. They were tied to their place of purpose. He knew he had a purpose and now he was being thwarted from that purpose as a result of his sin. And it was too much for him to bear. Isn't that something? Wow, this is greater than I can bear. And of course, God made provision for him and told him, listen, uh, you know, as you go about as a vagabond going from place to place, I'm going to make sure that nobody touches you, you know, and so forth. So God is still merciful, even in his punishment. Lord have mercy. I, God is so merciful, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. But anyway, that the first point is, that leaving home and leaving our place of purpose is, was initially a punishment given as a result of our being wayward in sin. Now watch this, second point. Too many today have chosen, <laughs> have chosen to leave their purpose and have chosen to leave their place, have chosen to leave their home. Hence, the reason why we have this proverb today. Too many today are embracing what Cain saw as a punishment. What Cain saw as something too heavy of a burden for him to bear, now, today, people are embracing it. People are leaving their place of responsibility they're leaving their position of purpose and blessing and saying, I'm going to go catch my own blessing. I'm going to go do what I want to do. I, I, I don't want to be here. Why do I leave their place of purpose? They choose to leave. Notice with me, Ecclesiastes 7 in verse 29. Ecclesiastes 7. And verse 29 says this, Lo, this I have found, that God has made man upright. God made man with purpose. God made man for a place of blessing, for a place of purpose. And God has put man, God has put humanity, God has put woman in a place of purpose. But watch this. But they, but they, but they have sought out many inventions. One version says many devisings. One, another version says many creations of their own. Many, one could say, purposes of their own devising. God made, you could basically interpret this text to say, Ecclesiastes 7, 29, to say, God made man, God made woman, God made humanity with a sense of purpose, but they have sought out their own purpose. That's essentially what the text is saying. And that's what's going on today. That's what's going on today. Nobody wants to do the purpose of God in their life. They want to do their own purpose. They want to do their own thing, their own will, their own way. They want to drive their own horse, huh? their own car. They want to drive their own car. They don't want nobody. No, I, I, why do I have to be held back? Why do I have to stay here? Why do I, I want to leave. I want to go here. Let me go. Let me, especially our, this new generation that we're a part of now. Oh my goodness. The new generation that we're in right now. Oh my goodness. 
I mean, they're just all over the place. You can't hold them down to nothing. They won't commit to anything, to anything. This generation we're a part of now, okay, no commitment. It's like, look, I do what I want to do. You're not going to hold me down. <laughs> what? You telling me I got a responsibility? Oh, let me go over here and create a new invention, a new purpose for me to go to. And you see this all the time, all the time, all the time, constantly. And it's hard to build a home. It's hard to build a society. It's hard to build up a purpose in your life when you're constantly creating new purposes to follow. Eventually, you're going to have to commit yourself to something. That's why people don't get married today. People don't want to get married because they want to leave avenues open for a new purpose to show up. <laughs> huh? Hello, somebody. Somebody out here knows what I'm talking about. I, I you know, I can't, I can't be held down. I can't be, you know, can't hold me down, girl. Uh-uh. I, uh-uh. No, no. I don't know. I don't want to get married. Don't want purpose because I might miss some new purpose. Listen, you're not gonna find the so-called new purpose and get some blessing from it until you've committed to the purpose God has given you now. You have to commit yourself to what God has committed and called you to now. And all these other things will be added but you and I have to commit ourselves to doing what God has called us to do, to being in the place where God has called us to be. God has called me and did call me to be here in Pittsburgh. He ain't called me nowhere else. So this is where I am. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. Now, if I was, if, you know, if I was one of these other kinds of people, I'd be like, man, I can't stay in Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh's too small. I need to go somewhere big. But see, that's not what God called me to do. This, this, it's not about me. It's about him. It's about his purpose, what he desires, what he has designed for my life. Anybody could say from any position, you know what? I, I don't want to be held down to this. I don't, I, I'm ready to go. Why do I have to stay here? Have you talked to the Lord about it? About your place of purpose? Because God, listen, your purpose and your place go together. They are not mutually exclusive. In order for you to have your purpose and to continue to survive and succeed and grow and mature in your purpose, you've got to be in the place. You've got to be in place. Come on, say amen. You've got to be in place. But too many of us think that, oh, well, I can still find my purpose. I just, I just want to do it in a, you know, in a better culture or in a better area or in a better, you know, a better neighborhood. I want to do it or whatever the case may be. Listen, be satisfied with where God has you. Embrace where God has placed you because there's purpose in your place. There's purpose in your place. Boy, I wish I had time. I'd really, really share some things with you all, but I don't want to belabor the point. There's purpose in your place. Listen, sometimes you might think you're spinning your wheels in a certain area and you can't see how am I going to get out of this little conundrum that I'm in. There's purpose in your place. There's purpose in your place. Where you are, there's purpose. God is calling you to find it. In order to do that, though, you have to embrace it. In order to do that, you've got to be grateful to God for his prov providence in placing you where you are. Lastly, God has called all of us to a home place of purpose. 1 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 20 and verse 24. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 20 and verse 24. Verse 20 says this, let every man 
abide in the same calling wherein he was called. Verse 24, brethren, let every man wherein he is called therein abide with God. What is God saying? You're looking for a new, you're looking for a new place so that you can find a new purpose. But here's what God is saying. Here's what God is saying. God is saying, your purpose is where you are. Your purpose is right where I've placed you right now. So here's what I want you to do. Here's what I want you to do. Find me in the place where you are. Find where I am in the place where you are. Therein abide with God, Paul says. Let every man abide in the same calling wherein he was called. Let every man abide in the calling and abide with God in that calling. Find out where God is, where you have been placed. And thereby you will find that search will yield your purpose. Yes, it will. Your purpose is in your place because your place is a place of purpose. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for your grace and mercy today. Thank you for your love. I pray, Lord, that you would bless those who have watched and will watch this later on, even today or tomorrow or whenever the case may be. I pray, God, that you would show and open our eyes and our hearts to our place of purpose and to, Lord, the why of our purpose, the how of our purpose, the where and the when and the way of our purpose. Because all of us have been called, Lord, you've told us this, for a particular specific reason. You've designed a plan for each and every one of our lives. But God, we've got to be grateful for where you put us now. We've got to find you where we are right now. So God, give us the eyes, the spiritual eyes to see where you are in our place so that we can find our divine purpose. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hey, listen, praise God. God bless you. I thank you for being with us today. God be with you. And listen, if you've been blessed, please like this and share this on your Facebook page. And if you would, please subscribe to our Facebook channel, our Facebook page. It just type in hashtag PTPOG inside of your search engine in the Facebook app. It will pull up a purple icon, much like the one you see uh, broadcast here behind me and click on it and join our ministry family. We love you. And we'd love for you to be a part. Please, if you're watching this by way of our YouTube channel, thank you so much and God be with you. Leave a comment down below. I'd love to hear from you again. And please, if you would, think about subscribing to this channel on YouTube. We really want and desire as much subscriptions as we can get. And like this, if you would, like this on uh, YouTube. And thank you. Listen, God be with you. God bless you. We've got hundreds, well, not hundreds yet, but we've got a lot of other videos on our YouTube channel that you can watch. So if you're watching this now, watch all some of the other videos and see the purposes of God being fulfilled prayerfully through the word of God in your life. Listen, love you with the love of the Lord. Take care. Have a great and awesome Wednesday. I trust the Lord is blessing you. I know he is. I know he is. Continue to seek the Lord where he may be found. And when you find him, you will indeed find your purpose. Take care. We'll see you on tomorrow. Bye-bye.